I can't hear you. <laughs> I couldn't hear you, honey. Couldn't hear ya. <laughs> hey, kitty girls. When you're unmuted, you can hear me now. It's COL Drag Race, season 14, episode four. And we are going to discuss the most recent three episodes, number 10, 11, and 12, which is Snatch Game, an extra special episode, and Mulan Rue, the Rusical. Rusical. For those of yeah. you that don't know who we are, hi, welcome to the show. It's Sunday, March 29, 2022, and this is Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. And uh, we're going to serve up some tea. We're going to have some conversation. If you don't know mm. who we are, my name is Gary. With me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. Yeah, so we put a little face on, and we're going to have some discussion uh -huh. this evening about those most recent uh, episodes yes. that have taken place. So uh, this particular season 14, we decided about every three episodes, we're going to jump back in and have a little discussion about what has taken place. Or hmm, maybe what hasn't really happened. Taken place. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. You know, mm. one of those things. So with that said, you ready to <laughs> you ready to get in to it? Let's get into it. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. Yes. So uh, this is put the pedal to the metal. These are our overall thoughts. Any serves, swerves, or nerves that may have happened in these past three episodes. <laughs> David, I'll let you go first. What are your thoughts on uh, 10, 11, 12? <laughs> um, reality is... Um, so we're just gonna we're gonna get this tea, we're gonna get the tea stirring, let it get going, just pipe it up like whoop whoop whoop, get that tea going, and we're gonna start really quickly with how many episodes is this season? How many fucking episodes is this season? Um, fact, because this is getting yes, girl, redunk, you less. So yes, yes, I did a little um thing. So you know we have had six episodes so let's just go through it like okay. we've had um seven eight nine mm -hmm. ten eleven twelve okay do you know how many queens we have lost in those six episodes wait wait wait, wait. let me guess let me guess do it two yeah. yeah two two fucking queens have 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 sassied away in six episodes mm -hmm. two what the f is up with that <laughs> like, I, I I appreciate what's going on, and that you know we knew we all knew about the 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 one twist, the the um. Someone will be go saved. bar the cast. Someone will potentially be saved. We all knew that, so we knew there was at least one episode that would be like, okay, extra. Mm -hmm. Then we got the unfortunate notice of 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 Miss Cornbread, you know, having to step you know step out of the competition. Um, so it kind of, you know, understood, okay, well, maybe they'll, they decided not to eliminate a queen, which makes sense because the queen had been, you know, left, mm -hmm. had had to leave. So we were there. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Got it. Okay, good. Okay. Um, other than that, why are there still seven, eight queens in this bitch? Um... <laughs> Why? I don't. I I don't understand. <laughs> Especially since we've had like you know six. You know we're on episode twelve now, mm -hmm. and we know like the first two they did they they eliminated girls, but they brought them back. Whatever. So like, what is the I I understand the respect the desire to kind of like not eliminate like i get it i understand it it's not my favorite thing i want these queens to go because <laughs> that's the nature of the game unless you're doing something or preparing for something that is oh my god drama filled you know what i mean right. like something ha huh, like oh shit like that's amazing the only thing we really kind of had with that was a um, the gold bar kind of challenge. The whole like the mystery of who had the bar that would save the queen, yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing we kind of had over our heads. So 
there's no reason other than that for them to not be eliminating queens. They even had, so we had Snatch Game, mm. and it was awful. Mm. God awful. Mm. Mm. We could we could have so many things. Oh. Yes, fact. That, that, honey. That, that very in that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so there was that part. And and I, you know, the drama was there because it was like, okay, you, Deja, are safe. The rest of y'all bitches are in the bottom, and all of you are up for elimination. My 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 jaw did drop a little bit there because it was mm-hmm. kind of like, wow, that is that is something else because there were seven queens in this bottom. That is a lot. Mm-hmm. Aloha hot. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, okay, well, we're going to have you lip sync, you know, for your life next episode. Cool, cool, cool. But they didn't give us any specifics until the episode. Right. Which then, like, okay, I get it. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, oh, what is it called? I forget what it's called. There's a, there's a, like a, it's a sports and bracket and kind of thing where you elimination things or you have right. the elimination rounds. Yeah. Like double elimination kind of thing. You had to, you had to essentially be eliminated twice mm-hmm. um, or three times in order to eventually get out. So it was this very interesting way that they did it. Mm-hmm. And I was appreciative, but I kind of honestly thought they were going to get rid of more Queens. We speculated. We talked mm-hmm. about this. We mm-hmm. chatted and was like, okay, how many queens are going home in the La 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 La, La Perusa? Like, two queens, maybe three queens? Like, how mm-hmm. crazy is this going to get it? And I was like, okay, if two queens or three queens go home, one of them most likely statistically will have the gold bar. So it's not really going to be two queens or three queens that go mm-hmm. home. It'll be one less, which made sense to me. I, or my bigger fear was that we would have Lala Perusa, and then the person who was eliminated would have the gold bar, which means nobody mm. went home. Mm-hmm. After all that. Yeah. Now that would have been some shit, and I would have probably thrown <laughs> something to the at the TV because that just uh, anyway. So no, but that you know. So we had the law, we had this thing, and we got we got rid of a queen at least. Thank God for that. The queen. Yeah. What? Mm, mm. Just you know. Yes. Yeah. You're not. You ain't wrong. You ain't facts wrong. are facts. Facts are facts, America. Mm. And and now here we are. Episode twelve. Spoiler alert! If you want to hit the little thing. Well, I've got I got a whole thing. So if you if you want to jump oh. to that, we can. Oh. So. Okay. Look at you. Do Do you want to get yours ready? Oh, sure. Hold on. Oh. So, because you're right, like we had Snatch Game, nobody goes home. Then we do the extra special episode, which extended the whole season by one episode, right? All the queens, except for Deja, because she's the only one that did Snatch Game correctly. Well, uh, <laughs> well, she, I think she would have been yeah! safe. She would have been, she would have been in the middle of the pack. Like she just, she would have been safe. Like she wouldn't have been at the bottom, but she also wouldn't have won. Um, mm-hmm. but she anyways. Did. But so everybody yeah. else was awful. Yeah. Back to back. <laughs> so, you know, so we extend a whole extra episodes. That's episode 11, this whole, like, competition thing. And we get to the end, and then Miss Jasmine uh, Kennedy is, you know, ever so positive and yet still leaves the competition. Mm-hmm. Talks a big game. But anyway, so now we get to episode 12, and it is the musical challenge. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But, yeah, so we get to the end of the episode, and we end up with – um this whole moment so uh damon and i are going to unwrap our bars uh during this moment as we uh listen bosco your fate now rests in the hands of the drag gods if you have the gold bar you will be safe now let's see what you've got Oh, my goodness! <laughs> oh, my goodness! 
Okay, girl. Mm -mm. Ooh. So Ooh, let's talk about the reality of this. Mm -mm. Every bar of RuPaul chocolate that you buy is already wrapped in gold. Because mm. everybody's a winner, baby. Yeah. But the reality is, is that on the inside, it's chocolate. It's just chocolate. And I don't, but it's actually... sound, I don't have that sound clip. I have not put yeah. together the mega mix. <laughs> That everybody else has, but it you know it is it, it is actually chocolate. That's true. That's true. Yeah. These are these are real candy bars. Yeah, which um, I'm gonna save because uh, I still have my other one. Which um, how hmm. the hell do you still have the other one? Because I like when it's good, when it's the good shit. I like to savor it. I okay. love savoring this shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, listen, I hear you on that. But, uh huh. Uh, I'm just going to own it. I'm a fat boy. And when I get hungry uh -huh. and I start putting something good tasting in my mouth, like, I don't want to stop. Like, that's just kind of how that goes. So I'm just <laughs> saying for the record, that's that's kind of that. So, yes. Um, and, and in conjunction with you, so I, I think we're both on the same page. I'm saying talk about stretching it out because you are correct. Six episodes, only two queens have gone home. We finally have the revelation. Bosco is saved with the gold bar. So we are still at seven queens. 12 episodes in. Mm -hmm. Only six have gone home. One was eliminated and eliminated because of medical. So Cornbread had to leave. And if you don't follow social media, then you may not be aware of the fact that Cornbread has also uh, let it be known that she is not coming back for season 15. She was not invited. So there mm. may be some drama behind that. No one's really sure quite what that means or what's going on. It's almost like she did something to piss Mama Rue off or World of Wonder. I'm not really mm -hmm. sure. And I don't know if that's if that's really what the case is. Um, there's some high speculation that she'll just be safe for an All Stars, and then like you know, everyone will totally tune in then because you know it'll be the cornbread show, and and that's just all there is to that. Wow. So yes, but um, no, I agree with you. Like uh, so over the course of these three episodes, I think we're both in agreement. Season or sorry, episode ten, snatch game, uh, girl, girl. Ooh, no she better don't oh but they did they did they done did they done they they done did that and it was it was it was not good no. so and yeah oh. like there's a part of me to wonder again this is me overthinking was it bad or was it the edit well, I mean, the queens have kind of talked about it, and they've discussed the difficulty of Snatch Game, that it is hard to, um, in silence, give jokes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, they, like I think when they had the, the one roast and due to the pandemic, they couldn't have an audience or whatever. Like, I mean, like, you know, I get it. Like, you're trying to be funny in the moment, and you say something that you think is witty or funny. And no one responds. Like RuPaul doesn't laugh. The two mm -hmm. guests don't laugh. Like <laughs> and the rest of the cast isn't supposed so to with, laugh. Mm -hmm. So like like blah 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 blah. <laughs> Shit. Right, right. <laughs> so I can I can see how the queens are talking about the psychology of like how like messy it is to be like, oh, I done fucked up. Like, you know, mm -hmm. especially if you keep saying things and they're not really kind they're of not landing or doing landing something at all. Yeah. Now, True. I mean, Bob has talked very openly about the chemistry, the formula of Snatch Game and is like, you need to do a recognizable character that people are aware of that has a personality or we don't know their personality. 
and then you add flavor to that. But really, it's about improv. It's about mm-hmm. yes anding. And so, mm-hmm. like, and, and as we said for several seasons of Sea Hall Drag Race now, make Rue laugh. Like, that's what it comes down to. If you can tickle Rue, if you can, you know, yeah. your tee hee and, you know, and all that, then mm-hmm. you're on the winning side of things. Agreed. And, and I'll get to it later, actually. I'll talk about because I have it later down in my down in my the snaps and eye rolls, but yeah, it this 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 past few actually real life I didn't bring my tablet over, <gasps> shocking and awe. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's literally sitting like right over there, but I'm not gonna go get it anyway. This did not help a lot of things. The 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 snatch game didn't help a lot of things. Mm. Uh, because, as you said, it was kind of done in this, like, void. Um, we don't quite know what all was going on, but given what I've seen of things, they don't do it with an audience. They, I don't think they've normally done it with an audience. Correct. And and so typically a lot of queens, I feel, the first time they ever do Snatch Game, not on All Stars, but on a regular season, they're really kind of thrown off by this, like, Mm -hmm. setup and how it operates and so when they come back for an all-stars and they do um you know the the snatch game you know other version where they're being matched with a date kind of a thing and it's and it's a little different dynamic at least they understand the concept better um and what i really think it comes down to is preparation have Mm -hmm. you developed a character thought of like not only the funny things that you want to say willow pill but Mm -hmm. can you improv things can you bounce off the other the other cast members the guests the whatever it's pretty sad when raven is a contestant and raven is one upping you and being funnier than anything that most you know pretty much everybody's saying i was like I was like, girl, this is girl. bad. Now, sure, Raven's been involved with this series, you know, nearly since its inception, you know, mm-hmm. but, but there's a there's a thing about that. It's like, you yeah, know, Raven I, has a lot of skill, but your, yeah. your contestant should have one up you. <laughs> yeah, that was I think that was kind of the big thing for me. It It should have been. Sorry, I realized I was real, real net foil rapper like crazy <laughs> um, it's okay blue hair in the matinee theater on Sunday <laughs> with your worthers and your purse wait only theater kids get that reference mm-hmm. but uh but again it was it was no never mind i'll get into it i okay. I, I really want i know I'll, I'll have a lot to say later so i'm trying not to say it now so uh, um in episode 11 for me was all right uh it was entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, I call shenanigans on production. The Uh-oh. edit makes it look like um, Claxton, Claxian, whatever his name is, the, the pit crew guy we've never seen hardly before. Oh, yeah. Who magically appears, who gets to, like, roll the balls. If you pay Act- close attention, did you see the balls really move? Like, they roll, I, but they don't bounce around inside of there and like well, change place. So, hi everyone, welcome to physics. Um, <laughs> the balls are too big for to really, really rotate in that thing. That mm, that mm. like that sort of the thing. Like, I'm not trying to be well. Actually, I'm going to be super fucking sure you get this morning. Um, Go for it. That's the whole point. Like, they are they are too big for this thing. Like those like things are meant for like something maybe like that big or actually paper yeah like tickets envelopes Mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. so like there's a whole bunch of things and then you can grab not not just like seven yeah sorry six pink balls with felt letters on them um i felt two of the draws were production done yeah and i think the very first one was like was was that um it was intentional for the drama kind of a thing. So I so I, I kind of call shenanigans. I don't kind of I call shenanigans on that. I think production mm-hmm. had a heavy hand in that piece, just like as we were recently discussing in our spoiler, in case you for some reason didn't know. Um, I think 
all along, everyone has been saying that production has the complete ability to shenanigan the gold bar reveal mm-hmm, as to when it's going to mm-hmm. happen. My favorite like, thing is everyone talking about how this is the episode that wins the Emmy for RuPaul's acting when the gold <laughs> bar is revealed. Because she didn't know that Bosco was going to be saved. Yeah. Like, I really genuinely, and this is me being an asshole about it, I want to check every single episode where they show the bar. Because mm-hmm. they pull it out, mm-hmm. almost all of them hold it like this. If I'm okay. remembering correctly. Which essentially are like this. Wherever where wherever their, the names oh. might be. You mean on the because the rate names written on the back, and we only saw that in the episode, the very first episode when they wrote their names. Yeah, and we've never seen any of them since then with their name written on them. Yeah, and that is my issue. If you had if you had shown me that this is your bar, mm-hmm. like, and no, if like we the way it looks, I don't think it's in a wrapper. I do think they are in similar like boxes like this. If they could have just done like something along this line where I could see something etched into it that is their actual name. Right. Are close, you know, whatever. I might be more apt to believe like this was your bar that you actually wrote your thing on and yada, 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 yada. I mean, they still could have fucking product- produced the fuck out of it. And yes, this is hers, but... But but here's oh, the th- look. Here's here's the-, here's the here's the chocolate. Right, right, right. Know? That's the whole problem with this setup was that even if they were in these cardboard like, you know, wrapped box containers, the problem is I can easily open the box and slip out what's inside and then replace it. Like so that's where everyone right off of the bat they were like shenanigans, like unless it's like going to be locked in a freezer chest or something. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And yeah. somehow, like, you know, the queens have control over the key or the access. I don't know. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have I'm episode 11 and I'm just like, OK, you know, at least we had we got to have the showdown. We got to have the drama. We got to have the mouth, uh, you know, speak their piece and do mm-hmm. their thing. And then they sashay away. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. And then we, you know, we move on. And so now we have the rusical. Um, I do want to say, <laughs> girl, you are killing me <laughs> for someone who hasn't eaten the other bar, unlike me who demolished it the day it arrived in the mail. <laughs> she just sitting over there snacking away <laughs> during this episode. Don't, don't, don't be jealous of the process. <laughs> you even said you ate dinner before this. Anyways, <laughs> um, I want to talk about this briefly before we move on to our next segment. Uh, we had a musical. And I don't know if I agree with some online assessment that it's the best musical of the entire series. I mean, like, I no. still like Glamazonian Airways. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say this, production-wise... Mama, this was a show. Mm-hmm. Like, a whole show. Not yeah. just some random, like, three songs that we pitter-patter together and we have some choreo to. Um, Fact. I will say this. The insertion of the composer as the male lead. Girl. Like, I get it. You were in theater. A lot of us were. And now you get to have your moment on international television. But come on. We couldn't pick anybody else. We couldn't find another male lead. Like, you couldn't get Adam Lambert? Are you kidding me? Oh, because that bitch would have showed everybody up. Anyways. um, So. <laughs> you mean like Leslie Jordan? All right. Now, here's the thing. Leslie Jordan, like, <laughs> God bless that queen. Like, she was so much... I would have laughed harder if she showed up as baby wipes like that. I would have peed myself. I would have ruined a couch. Like I just would have like, that would have been too much for me to handle if she showed up as baby wipes (laughs) instead of the evil, like millionaire Mm -hmm. or whatever that has all the money. 
Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So now they're gonna save that for the secret celebrity um, drag race. <laughs> Something. So no, but honestly, I I think Mulan Rue, the Rusical, was pretty good overall. Like I, I mean, um, I felt awful for Angie, like the character that she got, uh, because she got charisma, I believe, right? Um, my disconnect is the voice. Like the voice to her, I was like, oh shit. No. I'm like, this would have made way more sense if we'd given it to um like either Georges or Willow Pill. But uh, you know, like they're they were listening to it in the workroom and they were calling out what they wanted, and there's a rumor or a theory. Um, and Basiqui might be part of it, uh, that, you know, the whole drama between Bosco and Lady Camden for the saltine role may have been manufactured. Shocker. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm, I'm curious to see how that uh, comes out later on. But no, I, I mean, they I thought they did really good. Willow Pill as the, the green fairy, like the little absent fairy. I thought she did a really amazing job. Um, mm -hmm. I hear the criticism if you watch the pit stop. I think Monet was like, okay, or maybe it was Pangina was like, this went on too long. Like mm -hmm. this is a brief moment in the film, and we stretched it out, and it was just like too much. Yeah. And but I thought it was good. I thought it was comedic. I thought Willow really delivered it, and it made sense to me compositionally that she got a longer segment because she wasn't in anything else. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't considered part of the main group or the main cast, yeah. quote unquote. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I thought Deja, um, not Deja, well, no, Deja Sky did really good with her one segment. I thought the criticism was fair that outside of that segment, she was just there. Um, Diabetti, holy shit. Like, talk about the one who took the note that said, you personify this character from the beginning to the very end. Do mm -hmm. not fall out of that. Mm -hmm. I was like. Agreed. Oh shit. I was like, this girl is here. If she makes it to top four and we get like another musical number where, where they write their own lyrics or something, like I, I could see her doing rather well. I don't know. Agreed. Um Georges was Georges, you know. Uh I felt like I really felt a lot of the criticism was pretty fair. Bosco was okay, but yeah. I don't think she yeah. Knocked it out as saltine, and I think that Lady Camden totally deserved the win. Like, oh my God, she, yeah, you know, uh, she, she, like I, so I would, I would like to watch it again, but um, there's a big part of me that felt that um, Camden did exactly what you're supposed to do in this situation, mm -hmm. which is kind of what Angeria was telling her to do: mm -hmm. take the role that you didn't necessarily want and knock it the fuck out of the park. Make them eat it that they didn't let you do what you wanted to do. And she did. She literally let them have it. Mm -hmm. Having said that, though, I genuinely feel I don't know if she would have done as great a job as Saltine. Like, the role that she got, the Mama Z, mm -hmm. I feel was amazing. It was the narrator-ish kind of person for the, for the show. Right. And she was able to do all of this fun, unique stuff that I don't think she could have done as Saltine. Right. Um, I genuinely think she did a really great job with it. And I think that there was something awesome about the way she did it. Mm -hmm. um, that made it better than I think she could have done in the Saltine role. Um, having said that, Bosco was just lacking something. We were actually talking about it. Um, there were several like costume choices and hair. I wouldn't have done that short black like kind of hair, the kind of curly, coiffy kind of short thing. I hated the black. I would have done either a red or a blonde, something, something else. Mm -hmm. I agree with Michelle that she shouldn't have put her on her traditional eyebrows. Um, mm. cause it's now Bosco as Saltine, which is kind of true, but I think she should have done at least this one time 
something different with her makeup, something different with her face, done something, it's not really burlesque but something a little bit more vampy mm -hmm. that would have really helped. Like the red lip helped, but I would have wanted something, I wanted something more. Right. No, I agree. So, yeah, I mean, it, here we are, 12 episodes in. We mm -hmm. have seven girls. Seven fucking queens. So, right. Bosco. All right. You ready to move on to the next segment? Let's do it. It's All time. right, it's time for the snaps and eye rolls, aunties, the hits and the misses, the highs and the lows of these episodes. So, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? So, my snaps actually comes with a fun little link. Okay. <laughs> um, this is, I, I wrote down the best read ever, ever, ever. Um. <laughs> I am giving snaps to Miss Georges. Okay. For she really, really wanted this role. And as she was trying to like why she should like win this role, she was trying to put Lady Camden down and it put a very bad taste in my mouth. And also, if we want to talk about track record, she was in the bottom three times in one episode. <laughs> I had a feeling I knew what it was, but my favorite part of that video is the is the oop <laughs> next yep. to Miss Michelle. Yeah. Like this, this genuinely, I we were sitting here because we just watched it yesterday, laughing, loved it, amazing, big fucking read, right fucking there. Like, yeah, you want to talk track record? Want to talk track record? Uh, yeah, and it's it's not wrong. It's not right, really, either. But it's not wrong because um, it's true. Mm -hmm. She she was lip syncing a lot last episode, and I think it's a good, fair assumption. Like, right? Yeah, you want to you know, um, you want to call me out for have being in have been in the bottom so many times. Okay, fine. Well, I'm calling you out for being in the bottom so many times, right. you know, kind of thing. Right. And while technically it's really like one or two that she's been in the bottom for and discounting, you know, right. it is a it is a fair and, you know, valid read. So, um, yeah, I loved it. And I think it was amazing. And it showed me. Just a little bit more Georges that I wasn't sure about. Like, she mm -hmm. seems to be, we always, we know she's young. We know she's a baby. Right. Uh, but unlike Jasmine, I do feel that there's more of a, a calculating um, queen there. Mm -hmm. Um She's not the best in acting. She's not the best um, in some of the other things, but she's very much a good performer and she knows the shit. Like, I think she's real observant, <laughs> as we, we like to call it. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes what you need to be. Right. I would agree. So, yeah. best read, best shade, best moment, just hands down. Good for you, girl. You get your, I, I get my clap to you, Ms. Georges. That was, that was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to give my snaps to, and I have a question mark with this, but honestly, I don't remember another season where I feel that I can classify it this way. I feel this is the best cast cohesion. Okay. And, and by that, I mean... We might have actually, for the first time in 14 season, or, or in a very long time, gotten a whole bunch of queens together that are various in personality, skills, attitude, and, like, are honestly, like, 
committed. Like, like we have, I don't think we've had anybody check out. Mm -hmm, Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like nobody's like thrown in the towel. And even when someone kind of references in that direction, immediately one, two, three other queens are like, no, 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 we're not doing this. Mm -hmm. Like you are not giving up on yourself. Like we will not have that. That is not what's happening here. Like, Mm -hmm. like without saying it, like, and, and making us nauseous with it. I really feel mm. that these girls have come together, these contestants, as a family of sisters who are supportive of each other. Fair. And I think it – I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm I'm liking that. I get that not everybody likes, you know, every member of the family. Mm-hmm. So, sure, not everyone's necessarily always a fan of Diabetti. However, I've – been liking Diabetti because she, I think, is the, I don't know if I want to say the most raw or real, but she is uh, authentic. Mm-hmm. She speaks her mind. She she works through her shit. Mm-hmm. And it probably annoys the other girls. But what she doesn't do is talk nonstop forever and not let other people speak. Mm-hmm. That girl's gone. I... <laughs> It's really fact. Anyways. <laughs> oh, I mean. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I agree. I So, Daya for me has become, at first I was kind of like, gosh, she's so whiny and complaining and she's kind of a bitch. But then I'm realizing, like, she said some things in this most recent episode and I think the episode before mm-hmm. about, like, like, she doesn't, she, she knows she's in a competition. She's got very much that Bianca Del Rio kind of focus that, to me. Like, that, that, I, that, yeah. honey. That's, yeah. that's what I was, like, picking up on. I was like, mm-hmm, Yeah, mm-hmm. like, I'm in a competition. I love y'all, but reality is I'm here to win, mm-hmm. so I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to win. And sometimes that can border on whiny and complainy, whatever. Sometimes, though, it's very much... Like, I'm going to take this role and y'all can't stop me. Mm-hmm. Like, or try to stop me. It's kind of what she was kind of saying. Like, and I can't disqualify that. Right. You know what I mean? It it It, it is a surprising tactic, but it does make sense. Right. Because in the long run... That's kind of one of the ways you can win. We've already seen it happen. Granted, that was years ago. But the the idea of, like, I'm going to do what it takes to win. I'm going to shine when I need to shine. I'm going to take the roles, I, the stuff I want. And if you don't like it, that's on you, boo. Like, that's not on me. Right. You can not like it. You can not like me. But at the end of the day, I'm going to do what the fuck I want. And if you don't like it, well, sorry, not sorry. Right. That's very much what I've gotten from Daya. And I can't, again, like I can't knock it. I, I don't know if it'll win, but I know I can't knock it. Well, that, that kind of gets into, you know, who might make top, you know, four or whatever mm-hmm. um, in that case. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that remains to be seen um, what will come out of that in this case. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so I just I just really feel that this is the best cast, like, cohesion mm-hmm. and collaboration. Like, they're, like, that's why I kind of feel that I agree a little bit with, with Bussy Queen, that that whole fighting over Saltine might have been, like, produced. Mm. Um like, like, so here's an example. Like, this made me laugh. Da- <laughs> Dacia Sky. Oh, my God. Girl. She's like, well, because I won Snatch Game and I didn't have to, like, do the, the Lala Perusa. I should be able to get my, my pick of who I uh-huh. want. And-, and because I, and because I, like have been like I've 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 rolled you know I I you know didn't take what I wanted right. yeah last time right I'm going to 
So she's yeah. she, she says all that, right? And then so she's like, I want nerve. Crickets. Anybody else want nerve? Crickets. And I was like, oh honey. Like <laughs> like that. <laughs> like talk about <laughs> I was like, girl, I'm like, you look a fool, boo boo to fool in this moment. Like you're going to like, you're going to make a stand and nobody gives a shit. I mean, that is (laughs) DT there. Like she was like, I want this. Okay. Like not even, no no one even even said anything. They're just like, I'm just going to look at my my script here. Mm -hmm. I'm just listening to my music and be like, they ain't even paying no mind. They ain't paying you no mind, Miss De- Deja. And you're like, cool. I'm like, okay, like, girl. Yeah. No, it, it, it cracked me up quite a bit. Uh, moving on to eye roll. Damon, who are you, who are you giving eye rolls to? Sorry, I just read what you wrote. <laughs> oh, child. So, um, <sighs> So I've kind of talked about this a little bit already, Mm -hmm. but I'm calling this the Cerebral Snatch Game. Mm -hmm. So here we are, season 14. We've been doing this for like 12, 13 years now, not including, you know, um, All-Stars. I'm just talking about seasons. We've been doing this for a minute, Mm -hmm. 10, 12 seasons, whatever. It's been a while. This had to have been the oddest choices in regards to snatching that I have seen in a while. Mm. Kind of what you mentioned with regards to Bob the Drag Queen. Like you want someone like familiar, memorable, either has something or has done something hilarious that makes sense or we don't know they're funny at all and you're just making shit up. Mm. We had some opportunities for all of that things to happen in some Mm. of these characters, but I think people just went a little too far in their heads about this. Um, I'm just going to like, I'm kind of like going around and I'm realizing like there were some people, there were queen, like some of the choices that the queens made choices, choices that they made um, were. (laughs) You mean this? That was a choice. Yeah. Mm. Were a little much. Um, Perfect example for me is Angeria as Tammy Brown. It, nothing, nothing at all from the look to the mannerisms to the way she responded to any of that, none of that, none of it, not Mm. a single fucking thing reminded me of Tammy Brown. Tammy is a very unique character Mm -hmm. and there is, I don't think there's a really good way to copy that. Um, I think she could have done definitely better as Tammy. Like, I could see a little bit of the kookiness of Tammy Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people were rather critical of Angeria. Now, Angeria apparently posted on social media and said that they cut out a lot more of the mannerisms and they only stuck with the one and repeated it over and over again, um, which was another Got criticism it. I heard about Georges as Aubrey Plaza that they kept doing that one thing like six times. Yeah. Well, she wasn't Aubrey Plaza. She was, um, Alana Glazer, Alana Glazer character, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was, so it was this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just, there was a, there were, there was odd choices. Nothing really like, I don't want to say modern. That sounds really bad, but like nothing really like stuck out to me as like, I'm going to do something fun and original and hilarious. Mm-hmm. And none of it really worked. Yes. Um, Deja as, as Lil John was funny and it, and it worked. And surprisingly, you know, we got some repetition, but, she was able to kind of change some things up, which I was good. I was thank God about because if she had said, yeah, one more fucking time, um, um, I was going to lose my shit. But again, you know, Willow is Drew Barrymore going for the more like recent, like I've got my own talk show 
kind of thing going on. Okay. Okay. Like that, that's, that's, that's a choice. Um, the Gwyneth Paltrow thing went over my head because I don't know anything about what she's been doing recently. Mm. Um, the Ozzy Osbourne, like I, I just needed something more. We all, we've all seen the Ozzy shit. We know that, and he's crazy. We've seen it all. You know, we saw it on reality TV like ten years ago. Like, why of all the people would you choose that one now? There's not, there's nothing relevant now ish. And I think that was part of my issue. Like there was nothing now that gave me enough reason. Jasmine as Bessie DeVos was, was just the wrong choices all around, all over the fucking place. Mm -hmm. You could have done something so much different. Mm -hmm. We even had a, we even had her at a fucking risical like two years ago. That was better than what you put out here. Like, Mm. I like if you remember, like she was um it was Scarlet Envy, and it was kind of like, I can't can you believe I'm in a school? Like, like there was just these moments that were just hilarious. Like it just worked so well. And Jasmine made this odd choice of making her kind of this like fundamentalist Christian thing, which I don't even know if that's accurate or not. Don't know, don't really care personally, but there was like this whole like change up of things and finally lady camden is william shakespeare i think she was going she was trying to go for the body bard mm. thing and yeah. it did just didn't land right so again i think people were thinking too much the right. queens were thinking too much they were trying to nail it and it just kind of failed yeah super failed no, I agree. I just <laughs> also for the record, I don't know uh, why I said Aubrey Plaza for some reason that's stuck in my head. But um, I think that was her other choice. Oh, OK. That makes more sense because I was like. I was like, why did I get I... it was someone's it was someone's other choice Oh, because like, when been. they had the convo with someone had the conversation with Rue and one of the people they said, do you have an, when she asked if they had someone else, it was like Aubrey Plaza and. She asked whoever it was, which I think it might have been Georges. Um, she was like, yeah, it was Georges. I feel like it was Georges. She's like, give me something Aubrey Plaza. That's right. And and it was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rue, I'm embarrassed. Anyways. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Teacher's fucking pet. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. There's there's that. She already the hair hers. <laughs> I'm just waiting for lightning to strike from the sky. <laughs> it was a nice day out. <laughs> I was <still> with. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, there's mm. there's that. Mm. So what about you, Mr. Gary? Um, so my eye rolls are for what I'm calling production shenanigans. I just I I just feel like there's been some things going on. Um, we've already discussed some of them. We talked about the the gold bar potential manipulation. Um I just I think there's been some goading. There's some intentional kind of stuff at play a little mm-hmm. bit. Um and it and it's it just bothers me it bothers me because i think we can have an actual good season without some of that Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah and so it it it's like i get that you know we put some of this stuff in there because you know it's the drama and that's what the audience wants well i'm not really quite that audience i i just want to see not anymore well i want to see talented people honestly competing busting their ass to win Mm -hmm. end of story like so the the little inserts of certain things or whatever i'm kind of like eh like understood and i wish the gold bar was more authentic i think there's too much manipulation potential with it Mm -hmm. um so yeah i don't i don't know so yeah yeah i think there was 
there's something to your words you're saying, and I kind of feel the same way. Um, I think there should have been... I've often wondered what all is going on in regards to production. Like, we all know, like, this is edited. We all know that there's shit going on. We all know that there's, you know, probably a little, you know, earpiece in Rue's um, ear every time she's on, you know, back there or on stage, kind of, like, feeding her stuff so that she can, you know, put it out there. We already know, because we've heard it from a lot of the queens that have been on the show in the past, that production will whisper to people while they're getting ready or whatever or in confessional. Like, we know that there is a manipulation of some kind, which is probably coming from the production up above. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, even like the uh, Lala Perusa, um, if it had, if it had been anyone except Jasmine in the first round, I would have been, okay, here we go. Like, this is kind of legit. This is kind of, okay, this is going to be fun. It's all random, right, blah, blah, right, blah. Right. Like, I, I get it. But literally, literally, it was Jasmine, mm-hmm. the one who's been talking so much shit about how great they are at lip syncing and how they'll take anyone down and be careful when you lip sync against us because we will take you down kind of thing, bullshit. The one that's been talking this talk this whole fucking time. And here we are at this, like, everyone kind of fell into this bottom po- moment. So here we are doing this lip sync thing and it's random and one person will be picked out of this jar, you know, this raffle basket of of the rest of you. And it happens to be Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Who then picks Daya. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, by the way, the person you pick is to pick the song. Now, I will say, in the setup of the of the competition, that was the twist I loved the most. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. You pick the competitor, they pick the song. Mm-hmm. That, to me, seems totally fair. Um, I think it would have been a much more intriguing first round if Jasmine had picked Willow. Mm-hmm. Um, or, um, who else? Angeria. Maybe Angeria. Yeah. Like, like mm-hmm. pick a front runner to go against, yeah. like, like really heighten. Yes. It. Give me that. If you like, if y'all want some drama, give me that drama, like pick out someone who you kind of want to eliminate. Mm-hmm. Because you know that they're your biggest competition in the comp in you know in this contest, right? Right. Like, give me a Willow, give me an Angie, so that you can be like, okay, I'm I'm going to be better than them, um, so that I can move forward, and then they have the lipstick a little later, right? Yeah. No, that was so. I really feel that there was kind of shenanigans. That being said, um, before we close up, we have the following still in the competition: Miss Angeria Paris Van Michaels. Ms. Bosco, Ms. Diabetti, Ms. Deja Sky, Ms. Georges, Ms. Lady Camden, and Ms. Willow Pill. So mm-hmm. we have seven remaining. Theoretically, we need to eliminate three so we can get to the top four. Mm-hmm. And according to the calendar, as of when we're recording this, it is Sunday, March 27th. In two weeks, less than two weeks, is supposed to be the live finale recording. Which is on the 8th? Uh, 7th, 8th. Hold on. I know I sent it to you, I think. So, we've been, like, David and I are playing this little, like, production guessing game as to when the finale is going to air. Because typically in the past, the finale was recorded on Mother's Day weekend during DragCon or right before something Mm -hmm. in May. And then two weeks later, I think, is when the finale would air. So it was a really fast turnaround. However, mm-hmm. um, in order to eliminate three more queens, that takes us through this Friday the first, Friday the eighth, and Friday the fifteenth. Mm-hmm. And if we do a reunion show, then that would be Friday the twenty second, mm-hmm. which means the finale would actually be Friday the 29th. Yeah. So the for those who don't know, like you, you know, the 
Drag Race Season 14 live finale is being filmed in Las Vegas on April 6th, according right. to um, Twitter, Twitter. Right. And so, so my understanding is they're using the theater where the Rue Girls live show is happening, which okay. actually makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Because they, they already have a theater. They don't have to try to book another theater. They just don't have the regular show that day mm-hmm. or for a couple of days. Um, so, yeah. So uh, if it airs on the 29th, the finale, that means it'll be just over three weeks from when they film it. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Um, yeah. That being the case. Since, since we're at this point, and this is the season that never ends, apparently, um, <laughs> and we've got another three episodes, presumably, before we get to the top four. Who do you think is next likely to go? And do you have a top four, oh. maybe? Okay. Well, let's get it going, because I thought I had... Oops, this is season 13. We need to update that link on the page. Ooh, ooh, what are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> Oh, I guess it is yeah. 13. My bad. It's okay. It just caught me off guard. Well, the cast is at the bottom. Mm-hmm, of the dock. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Ah, that may help too. I should probably do that. Let me right. do that. Uh, anyway, um, so looking at the rest, rest, looking who's left. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'll, t- um, I'll tell you who I think is most likely next to go. Okay, go for it. I think it's Principal Deja Sky. Mm. If you fair <laughs> and the reason, so if if you don't know why I said that, um, so there's a podcast that uh, Ed in our regular um, season shows uh, turned me on to to listen to um, called All Right Marys, and um, it's these two uh, queens like us talking heads um, that do a show and have a Patreon and all that kind of stuff. But they've been talking about principal Deja Sky all season long. It's so funny. They think, um, that Deja Sky is the perfect school principal, like personality <laughs> who oversees the staff and all this stuff. Anyways. Nice. Um, but that being said, I honestly think Deja girl, you're a danger. Like you're, you're really unfortunately safe, but safe to bottom. Like you're not delivering anything. You did mm-hmm. really good in the rusical and then you delivered this other thing. Oh, that brings me back to production shenanigans. That's what I wanted to say. The Uh-oh. runway for season or for episode 12. I think the prompt was reflective. Mm. Because some of us are not fans of what was worn and we think it doesn't, it isn't mirror, mirror. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why Deja wore what she had because it's holographic, reflective, not quite like high viz. And mm-hmm. because even I, when she walked out, I was like, girl, what in the hell are you wearing? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a mess and no matter what the, what she thought the prompt was. Fact. But, but Deja doesn't strike me as a person who gets the prompt wrong. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about shoulder pads? Like, hello. Mm-hmm, 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 shoulder mm-hmm. pads on the runway. Couldn't even walk through a goddamn doorway. Like, uh-huh. like that girl got it, got it right. So, like, yeah, I, I think I, I that's where the I assignment. think there's <laughs> right. I think there's shenanigans. I think I think mirror mirror was not the prompt. I think it was like reflective or something. Mm. That being said, Deja Girl, you're a danger. I think you're going home soon. I probably yeah. Next. I will say, if it is not Deja, mm-hmm. I I will put Georges on that line. Mm, okay. And the only reason is because she has been consistently bottom a lot, like a lot. Um, and I, as much as I love her skills and she's a great performer, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. She has been in the bottom. If you, if you count episode 11, five times. Okay. So that's a lot mm-hmm. or a queen. Right. And while she has been able to save herself pretty much each time that's oh several too like a couple too many 
we normally know as the rule of three, mm-hmm. usually. Jasmine was the was the was the one of the few that kind of made it to like five. She right. was there quite a time, so that's why I feel like it might be her time to go. Okay. Um, given what I think, if I remember, next week's challenge is going to be. Um, uh, yeah, I feel that's going to be again another bad mm. one for Georgia. Okay, no, no, no. I I take I I take back what I said. I can see to Uh-oh. what you're saying. No, because the Uh-oh. more I think about it, I think Deja could be funny. Yeah, Deja th- could definitely be funny. Like actually, I think Deja should probably be the MC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think Deja will be fine for the roast. George mm-hmm. is the one that I'm nervous about. Like that won't be very good. Like you have you're yeah. You're, Okay, so, right, Georgia's might be next. But I think we're still talking the same thing, right? Like, they're not top four. Mm-mm. So they're part of yeah. the next three to go. Yeah, they're going to be the two that go. Um, and the other, the third one that I feel may be in danger mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is Bosco. I agree. I'm I'm gravely concerned because I thought Bosco was a front runner, And since Snatch Game, I have really now begun to doubt that. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I think in over so I'll put it like this. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna just let me just spill this tea. Mm-hmm. Where's my cup? Like do 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 do. Okay. <sighs> she is having the failings similar to, to Monet Exchange. She right. can sometimes kill it in an in a in a um uh challenge but falters on runway. Okay. As we saw recently, past four weeks, her on the runway has been this very similar silhouette, this very similar, like, bra, panty, corset in the middle, fishnet stocking, heel, boot, whatever. It has been very, very similar. And I get some of the girls are saying, like, I've seen it online that, you know, she worked as like she worked as like Starbucks or whatever for for you know before this. So she wasn't making a lot of coin. Understood and respected. But we also know that some of the queens do a lot when they come to this show. Sometimes taking loans and and spending a lot of money that they may not get with the for the potential of doing this show. Mm-hmm. Was COVID an issue? Maybe. I don't know. To me, when you put her next to everyone else, there's been a lack of of real, like, dynamic in regards to her runways. Right. She has so she she was really great in the beginning, and maybe here we are since we're kind of near closer to the end. She's petering out because she doesn't have stuff to wear. It's entirely possible. If she knew how to sew, I would be working that fucking sewing machine and making some shit that I could 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 wear. Um, because heaven knows. You need to do something because if I see one more goddamn like something I could have bought at Victoria's Secret or Hustler, like I'm going to have a fit. Uh, Having said that, though, I really loved her most recent um, uh, runway look, the chrome, like the the metal, like Mm -hmm. all that. That that was amazing. Unfortunately, it fell flat because you've worn this similar silhouette like three times before. Right, right. No, I agree. If like, you would, like I think yeah. maybe Monet and Pangina had talked about that in Pit Stop and said, the problem is we've already seen this week after week after week. Like, like this is the height of that kind of silhouette that look. The problem is we've mm-hmm. already seen the silhouette mm-hmm. and we're tired of it. Like, so it doesn't have yeah. the same impact. Like, that's where you fa- you failed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she's my other one that might be in danger. Mm-hmm. Um, so that leaves my top four as Angie, Willow, Daya, and Lady, and Lady Camden. Yeah, I I really feel like top three is Lady Willow and Jeria. Um, and I think it's really possibly knowing what the finales are going to 
be like. I have a suspicion it's gonna be um it's gonna be Lady and Angeria. Mm. Because they're both uh I just think they're well rounded in skills and set, like um mm -hmm. can dance. Like can mm -hmm. like I, I really think they can entertain um to to a really high degree. And I think that's what is gonna be needed for the end. I could be wrong. I might mm -hmm. even be happy to be wrong, but that's, mm -hmm. that's sort of where I'm seeing it at the moment. Yeah, and that makes sense. So we'll see. We shall see. We've got, hopefully, just a couple more episodes left to go. Girl. God, I hope so. Girl. Well, this is already past the 14 number that I thought it was going to be. Because we've got two episodes left, and we're still at five queens. So... Right, if, so so in theory, we've got another five episodes to come, which means it'll be a 17-episode season. And I don't recall, that might make it the longest season ever. True. I, I also, also wonder if they're going to actually do more. Like, could it be 18? Oh, girl. I don't even know. And I'm, I'm on this, like, mental... I don't want anyone else like, saved at this point. I genuinely don't. We know no one will be saved by the chocolate bar thing because that is gone. That is done. There's only one. There was only one, and we already know that it's gone. So hallelujah for that. Although I will say that sucks for the other girls. I mean, yeah. Like they may be happy for, for Bosco that she won, but now everybody else knows don't fuck with the chocolate bar. It don't matter. <laughs> like mm -mm. you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be saved. Um season thirteen had sixteen episodes. So if we're predicting correctly, this will be the longest season to date. Mm. You just broke the damn bar. <laughs> That's all right. Sorry. We're, anyway. We're, we're wrapping up. Um, if you want to get in touch with us and you have ideas, uh, you want to share your thoughts, you want to disagree with us, you want to give us feedback, there's plenty of ways mm -hmm. to do it. You can go to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. You can send us an email, CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. You could leave us a voicemail message, um, and we'd be happy to play it on the show and discuss your thoughts. Uh, you can call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. If you would like to follow us on social media, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Just type in Cubs Out Loud. Um, if you want to join our chat over on the Entourage group, uh, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. If you want to know about uh, when we're going to be recording live on YouTube, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar hyphen C-O-L. Uh, and you can see the live show and interact with us um, in the regular series. If you want to support us, there's plenty of ways to do that. You can go to Cubs Out Loud, sorry, go to Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, and you can actually pick yourself up some various items. So David and I happen to be wearing the drag um, consent is my foreplay drag pride shirts. Uh, and we also have lovely houseware items in addition, like our mugs here. Mine happens to be in a lovely frosted glass. <laughs> Damon's enjoying his chocolate with his tea um, in his uh, uh, duo tone pink. Has a matching handle and interior. Um, if you want to, you can uh, get the behind the scenes uh, pre and post shows of Cubs Out Loud by joining us at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for just a dollar a month or more um, and get some benefits. Um, this is our anniversary of four years of having patrons and we very much thank them. We're going to be uh, in the next uh, week here, the last week of the month, wrapping up to reach out to them because they're some of them, not all of them, but most of them are getting T-shirts um, as a reward. So and ah. we, have a, we have a new special shirt that's going to be uh, made just for them. And then, oh. uh, some of them are getting uh, gift cards and some extra stuff so they can get other things. Or mm. if you just want to tip us, you know, just throw some money our way. You don't yes. have to be a patron. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can just give us a tip and we'd be happy to take it. Yes. Um, <laughs> also, in terms of uh, us as a podcast on iTunes, of course, you can rate us five stars. Thank you very much. Leave a lovely comment. We would appreciate it. You can pretty much find us anywhere online uh, that you can get your podcast. Uh, type in Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. We do have a separate audio feed of this podcast that way. So you can uh, just listen to this if you're not interested in the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Damon, if they're going to find you online, where would they go? Well, 
if you wish to get in touch with me, which, you know, you want to, you can find me on most bear related sites or Facebook as Theater Cup 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gamber73. When it comes to all things Drag Race, um, I created a separate Twitter handle to try to avoid spoilers. But of course, I got spoiled on who got saved because some damn bitch had to like just say it in their Twitter. They were like, they're like, gee, RuPaul should win the Emmy for the response to Bosco having the gold bar. And I was like, God damn it damn it <laughs> it's 9 a.m saturday morning could you give me a chance to just watch the damn episode anyways it's because i don't have it live and i'm not paying for it <gasps> scandal anyways <laughs> we want to thank you for joining us for this episode of comes out loud drag race and we will talk with you later darlings Bye bye